Hey, how's it going? So I received a little bit of an interesting challenge uh, over the weekend, specifically concerning my own personal collection. I'd be super interested to see what you deem worthy of personal collection status. Show us, bro. It's the emphasis on the bro. This was in response to me explaining that I, I generally keep a very small private collection. It's really not many pieces at all, it's just a handful. Uh, for a variety of reasons, but before we get into any of that, let's cover a couple of things real quick. First of all, please like, comment, leave, uh, ring that little notification bell. It's greatly appreciated, it helps the algorithm. I tremendously, tremendously appreciate it. Uh, second, the state by state videos that I've got coming out, those will those are being pushed back. All obviously that was supposed to be today. It's not happening. Uh, I had a I had some really good constructive comments that I, I'm basically revamping everything that I'd already started because it it was going to be something. It, it is something that will bring value to them. So I'm taking a little bit extra time to flesh them out. The order that they'll be dropping in is going to be completely different now um, because again, I should never have told you guys that it was going to be alphabetic because it was just, I am in Washington! Like, I know, I'm sorry, somebody has to be last and I'm sorry, I can't just drop them all at once or you'll be waiting for two years. Uh, and then third, orders that came in over the weekend plus I think one that came in Thursday will go out tomorrow barring anything catastrophic. So today I'm going to show you some of my my personal collection pieces. I, again, I only keep a handful. And I will say right now, if you're watching with young children, I'm going to explain why I keep a smaller collection. And it might be a little bit sensitive. So here's your warning. In three, two, excuse me, one. So so I had a great aunt, uh, I believe off the top of my head that was the relation. A lot of my family members, or at least some of, some of, some of my family members were into gem and minerals. My grandmother and grandfather, it was more my grandmother, but uh, grandpa encouraged it quite a bit. Uh, were rock hounds. Their uh, grandma's sister, I believe was into it as well, but I had a family member that was in Estes Park, Colorado when it flooded. And it's somebody that I don't remember ever meeting. I don't think I, it might have even happened before I was born. Uh, but unfortunately she died in that, in that flood. And again, family members will, you know, use humor as, humor as a coping mechanism. And it was years after the fact, but I vividly remember as a child somebody somebody making the joke, and I can't for the life of me remember who it was. And that's probably for the best. Um, let me backtrack just a smidge. Uh, she, one of the neighbors said that she saw this family member go back inside the house as this was happening for some reason. And one of my family members, you know, made a joke. It's like, well, you know, she probably went back in for the rocks. And, you know, again, humor is a coping mechanism. It's, it's just how it is. In reality, she probably ended up going back for her, for her pets. Um, but, yeah, she never, they never, they, I don't think they ever found her. Um, and as a child, that really, really kind of scarred me. And growing up, you know, I, I was interested in fossils and stuff like that, and especially as I became an adult, it, it kind of hit me. It's like, you know, I don't want to be... I live in Tornado Alley, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to ever be tempted to run back inside of a house that's on fire or a tornado's, you know, or, you know, again, something, something's happening, some kind of, some kind of emergency. I don't want to ever be that person that runs back inside for a rock and, and dies because of it. It's just, it's... Um, it, it did kind of scar me just a little bit. And 
And so I keep a very small private collection. My general rule of thumb is I enjoy it for a while. Once it sells, it's some, somebody else's joy at that point. But there are a few pieces that I have that I've not been able to part with, that I don't intend on parting with. And so I will show you those today. Uh, first and foremost, well not foremost, but first, this little piece right here. You may remember seeing a video that I posted on this. You may have seen a short, you may have seen an actual video. I'll try to remember to leave the, uh, try to put it in a card up here. But this is Trinitite. This is one of the few pieces of evidence of the first atomic bomb detonation near Alamogordo, New Mexico in 1945. This was collected in 51 by a man named Ralph Prey. He collected about 2,000 pounds of it total before it became illegal to collect, and this is a little piece of that collection. It is slightly radioactive. It does trip a Geiger counter. I wish I had one to actually show you. That'd be kind of fun. I should invest in one. That'd be pretty good. Uh, but it's sand that fused together into a little coarse glass from, from the raw heat and power of that atomic blast. And I... I keep it because it's, one, it's really cool. There's a very, very limited amount of it on the market because it is illegal to collect now. You can't go out there and just go looking for it. It's, it is it is illegal to collect. It's legal to own pieces if you, you know, own old stock and stuff. But it is. It's a reminder of just the, the raw destructive power humanity had achieved at that point. And, and I keep it because it's kind of an interesting, it's an interesting piece of history. Next up, you've probably seen this geode before, or you may not have. I know there are some uh, some subscribers that have come in that had not had never seen this before. But this geode is one that I pulled out of a river this summer. It was an anhydro geode, and the sheer insanity that ensued from cracking this geode is the reason I'm able to or at least the physical reason why I'm able to talk to a lot of you today. It was the impetus for, for my channel kind of blowing up, and I'm very thankful for it, so I'm, I'm probably never selling it. It does mean a lot to me. Let's see here. So this is a big, polished, agatized ammonite, uh, it's lower, I, I want to say it's lower to middle Jurassic aged fossil from Madagascar. Uh, there's just a smidge of amylite on part of it. Uh, but it's a big one. It's got some, some calcite replacement running through it, agate. It's, it's just a really fun piece. I like it a lot, but it was a gift from, it was a gift from one of my nieces. So it's, it's kind of special. I'll show you, it's kind of special, you know, it's a gift from one of my nieces, nieces, so I'm not, I'm not getting rid of it, so it's kind of special. This is a piece that is, um, in danger of becoming part of my collection. I do have an offer on it that somebody gave me, so I'm, I'm probably going to part with it. Um, but I like it a lot, and this is a, um, somebody's messaging me. Cool. Uh, but this is a piece of amber, and it's kind of hard to see, but it's got some uh, some little flies in it. This came in in a trade, but it's a really good piece of Dominican Republic amber. Really, really solid. I'll probably get a nice little video on it again before I... Um, sorry, I'm, I don't know why I'm just like, bleh, all of a sudden. Um, but I'll probably get a video, video or two, another macro lens video of this up before... Um, before I part with it. But this one, this one really is in danger because I like it an awful, awful lot. Oh, uh, there's one other, actually a couple of other things that I, I do keep, and one of them I'll have to overlay a picture of it because it, it's not here. Um, but they are petroleum-included quartz pieces from New Mexico. Uh, most of the petroleum quartz on the market today comes from uh, Pakistan. It, it's pretty. It fluoresces under a black light. But I just, I really have a hard time parting with these. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick out some nice ones that fluoresce. Because it looks like a little galaxy. It's really, really cool. But I'm going to pick out enough to fill a small jar. 
to keep for myself, and then I'll, I'll I think I'll list list the others because they they really are. There's something special, and they're so much different from the Pakistani stuff. These ones. The ones that are surface collected, the petroleum inside of it has gone through an oxidation, so they end up fluorescing oranges and yellow, and you know a deeper yellow color. The ones that weren't surface collected, meaning that they weren't sitting on the on the ground for the sun to 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 oxidize, uh, for the sun to cause a chemical reaction inside of them. Sorry. Those ones that were actually dug for have more blues and soft greens and yellow colors when they fluoresce. But they're a little double terminated, meaning they've got points on one axis on two sides. Uh, little double terminated quartz pieces from uh, from New Mexico. Some people call similar formations Pecos diamonds. These are a little bit different because they're petroleum included, but some Pecos diamonds can be petroleum included as well. Uh, and then there's there's two more pieces... And there are some others as well. Odds and ends. Mostly stuff with emotional value. Um, little, A couple of little specimens and, and pieces that my grandmother gave me. Although, um, yeah, and, and there's some, uh, some other things that came from my grandparents. Uh, collection pieces and stuff like that. Nothing, nothing crazy. It's nothing particularly special, but... It has emotional value. Uh, these two pieces are probably the ones that mean the most to me, though. Uh, these are it's just little geode halves. Uh, one's a little bit of amethyst with a nice calcite in it, and the other one, uh, this is a Las Choyas. I don't have any of these on the website because they're kind of pricey, um, and I just haven't been able to afford to buy them at the moment. But it's a really fun one. And this is a Las Troncas. It's a really sparkly one, too. Um, let's see if I can... It's kind of hard to do it from the camera like this, but... Real sparkly one. Clear quartz druzy that's overlaid some uh, chalcedony. It's a really fluorescent piece, but... Again, I've cracked a lot of geodes, so this one... Th these ones are important to me because the... Um, you know, my... My favorite person has the other two halves. So they're special to me, and they sit on my bookshelf. Um, and it's not a rock, but there's a really cool... Oh, actually, you know what? I'll just pull this down. Again, it's not a rock. It's just really cool. My nephew gave it to me. And it's literally it's literally a dinosaur made out of like recycled screws and stuff, which is really, really cool. Like This is, just <laughs> like, this is really, really dope. Um... And yeah, I, I just, I really like this. And that's me deflecting right now because I've embarrassed myself just a little bit. But that's basically, that's basically it aside from a few pieces. I don't keep a big collection because it's, it's, I'll enjoy them while they're in my care. And then it's time for them to move on. But these are just a few of the pieces I can't bring myself to part with. Anyway, I'll hopefully have the... Oh, that was another thing I forgot about. The uh, video about the Forbidden Geode. Um, the Rated R Geode. That one is... That'll probably be Tuesday. Just because I need to actually film some stuff for that tomorrow. And I didn't get to it on Friday. Uh, so I'll have something up tomorrow. It might be some geode cracking. It might be something else. But I'm going to try to keep the schedule going. 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Uh, Sunday through Sunday through Friday. Um, I might make it a little earlier on Friday now that I think about it. But, yeah. I hope you all had a wonderful day. Thanks for just chatting with me, I guess. And I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Have a good day.